What the heck is crappin' guys? Bearded Storyteller here. I picked up something, uh, well, a little bit more interesting than most of the stuff that I've uh, shown on my videos, of course. Um, been focusing my attention more towards my Suburban, but, uh, you know, I figure I'd do a little bit of gun content for the first time in a long time. But anyway, um... So I, if you go back through my videos, you'll see where I had bought a Sig Sauer SP2022, which is like one of the most hated Sig pistols ever made because of it having a polymer frame. And I mean, people hounded me and hounded me about it until I finally got sick and tired enough that I, I sold it, you know. I mean, I got 500 bucks for it, which that's, that's okay. But, uh, and as a matter of fact, while I was at it, I decided to literally sell off every polymer frame gun that I own, uh, except for one. And that one being my Glock 22 Gen 3, and that's only because I have to carry it for work and stuff. This is my duty pistol for work. I do, uh, high profile security detail, so it's one of them things that we, we gotta have. So, anyway, without further ado, I picked up something interesting today on a trade. That being a real SIG. Everybody's telling me, you need to get a real SIG. That SP-2022 ain't a real SIG. Well, here's a real SIG, people. First of all, you can see it's empty, okay? Nothing in it. Completely clear. Alright, so we're good. This right here is a SIG P220, chambered in 45 ACP. But this is not just any P220, okay? This is a 1987 made in West Germany. And I don't know that you'll be able to see it on this side or not. It's probably going to be too blurry for you to see because my camera sucks. But you can look right here and it says made in West Germany. At least I believe so. Yeah, made in W Germany. And, uh, you know, it's got the P220 right above it. And you can also tell by this hammer spur, it is one of the first ones that was transported to America. Now, or imported to America, whatever you want to call it. It does have these black checkered uh, grips on it. I don't know very much about SIG pistols at all. Like, I am a complete novice when it comes to these things. But as far as I know, one of the things that you want is for it to have this pin right here right there for some reason that pin is really important and uh might be able to get you a good look we do have uh it's not even a three dot white system but right back here on the back is kind of a there's a name for it but i don't know what you call it but it's not it's not painted on it's not like it's fingernail polish or something but i don't know what the actual name of it is but anyway Regardless, uh, of course, you know, this thing has been rode hard and put up wet, let me tell you. Um, so, you, you think a Glock smile is bad? Man, I don't like the slide release, I don't know. Look at the barrel on this thing. I mean, my goodness. It is smooth as butter, though. My goodness. Yeah. Check out the wear on the barrel. I mean, you can tell by looking at the slide, you know. It, it's had some rounds put through it. There's no doubt about it. Most of the finish is pretty much worn off of the slide. It kind of has that stone wash finish look on it. I actually really like it. I like a well-worn pistol, you know. I like one that looks like it's it's been shot a lot. I have an old Beretta 92 from the 80s that is uh, the same way. I mean, it's barely got any finish left on it. Well, you better, you better get your act right. 
Okay, the video quality is going to suck. My apologies for that. Anyway, guys, so I traded my Glock 43X and my Taurus Model 66 chambered in 357 Magnum for this. Uh, this is known to be, it is said to be one of the most reliable uh, SIG pistols ever made. I mean, there is a big, big following for this. Uh, I don't know which one came out first, whether it was the 226 and then the 220 and then the 229 or if it was the 221st, 220. I don't know. I am not real educated on these things at all. But uh, it's super easy to break it down. I really enjoy it. It does have a, a decocker on it, which of course most of your uh, SIG pistols do have. So, of course, you just pull down that, and that decocks the pistol. And right here is your uh, slide catch, slide release, whatever you want to call it. Right here is your takedown lever. Real easy to do. You just swivel it down, just like your M&P series handguns, of course. Um, I have not shot this yet, as uh, you probably would have guessed. But, I mean... Look at the top of the barrel too. I mean, there is like no finish left on it. Uh, it's it's kind of almost like a 1911 in a, in a way. If you think about it, this and the 1911 are very similar. Um, this does have an aluminum frame with a steel slide, steel barrel. You know, everything else is pretty much steel. Uh, whereas most of your 1911s, of course, would be uh, steel frame, steel slide, you know, hammer forged barrel, stuff like that. Um, it so happens to be that I have a 1911 right here. Uh, this is one of my other uh, very sexy ass handguns, let me tell you. Alright, so first of all... Alright, so that way you can see this one's empty as well. No magazine in it. Chamber is clear. Okay, nice and clean down in there just like we like to see. Because this thing is pretty much a safe queen and nothing more. Uh, this is my uh, TSOS SDS import 1911 Commander size 45. So if you think about it, you got... 7 plus 1, 8 plus 1, most of your modern 1911 magazines are 8 plus 1. Well, with the uh, SIG P220, whether it be old or new, it is still 8 plus 1. Now, of course, I do have it loaded, but, you know, it's not in the gun, so you ain't got to worry about it. Um, 8 plus 1, 8 plus 1... They're both single stack, they're both 45, they're both hammer fired, you know, uh, the, I mean, of course, there's, uh, there's really kind of no, no comparison, it's not really an apples to apples comparison if you think about it, um, you know, but they're, they're similar in some aspects, both of them have military service, military track records and stuff like that. There are still, to this day, different militaries around the world uh, that still use the P220 as their main service weapon. And I might, if I can manage to get away with it without my company getting too angry with me, I might actually start carrying it in this overly convenient holster right here. Now this is just a cheapo. You can get actual duty holsters for these things for like ridiculously cheap. Um, which is something I'm kind of bummed out about. When it comes down to the 1911, I mean as long as this gun has been out, it is actually really hard to find good duty holsters for them. You know, like Safari Land holsters that don't cost an arm and a leg. You know, it's ironic is that you can buy a duty holster for this like a level 3 safari land or a level 2 safari land outside the waistband basket weave holster for like 25 30 dollars ain't that some crap 25 30 dollars new 
not used. Used is like fifteen dollars. But yet yeah, you're gonna pay a hundred and eighty, two hundred bucks for one for this. But this has been out far longer. Um, not to mention, okay, you got the Glock 22 that's been out you know since i think the 1980s or the early 90s i think it's the early 90s if i'm not mistaken i'm not a big glock guru so pardon me but anyway these things have been out for a long time too and the holsters for these things are even expensive like this is the most common dead gun uh duty weapon in the world just about next to uh the uh 1911 and beretta 92 and uh, M9 and stuff like that. I mean, and yet holsters are really expensive. Here, here's another thing. Okay, so here's the Sig magazine, and here is the uh, 1911 magazine. You know, these things are cheaper than 1911 magazines. Like, if you want quality 1911 magazines, you know, like uh, Metal Form, Ed Brown. Uh, Kimber mags, Chip McCormick mags, Wilson Combat, whatever brand you like to run in your 1911 or whatever brand is most recommended. Um, Mechagar, whatever. But anyway, regardless, the magazines for the Dead Gum Sig are cheaper than the 1911. It's kind of mind blowing in my opinion, but what are you going to do? You're not going to do anything. That's what you're going to do. Anyway, I have to say, it's a very slippery finish, but it's a very nice finish, too. Uh, either way, so on the other side right here, which, of course, you won't be able to read it, so I'll read it to you. Uh, it does say Sig Sour, and then right beside it, it says Sig Arms Incorporated. Uh, Tice, I think that says Tyson's Corner, Virginia which I'm guessing is where this was imported to, or who imported it. But on the other side, you know, on the opposite side where the serial number and all that is, has your P220, and then of course your Made in West Germany, Made in W Germany. And I gotta find it real quick. This uh, slide release is kind of weird, so pardon me. Let me see if I can find it. There are some special markings on here somewhere that have like the date code and stuff. I gotta try to see if I can find it on here. I know I've seen a video. Somebody was talking about that. <clears throat> the date code and stuff. Um, I thought they said it was on the bottom of the barrel, but it is definitely not on the bottom of the barrel. Can you see where it is from where you're at? I can't seem to find it anywhere. Uh, there are some... Damn, where are you at, man? There are some special markings on here somewhere. Let's see, is it there? No. There. Oh, there it is. Okay, yeah. Alright. So, excuse me. So, right here on the bottom, there are some special, like, weird looking Chinese symbols almost and those are how you you can determine the date code mine is a 1987 of course but uh <clears throat> I tell you what guys I have to be honest I mean it is very very smooth which I mean it should be considering it has been shot so much that the finish is worn off of the barrel like it is I mean it is like polished you know what I mean polished finish it is absolutely crazy you can see some of the black right here maybe just a little bit but for the most part I mean the top of it is completely polished the other side is basically polished you know you oh you're actually gonna work this time you look at the barrel the guide rod you know it is a full-length guide rod but I mean it is you want to talk about a smile boy look at that smile right there that's a pretty smile 
Uh -huh. it's, no, it's not a Glock smile. Uh -oh. It's not a Glock smile. Shut up. Still a smile, nonetheless. Okay. Yeah, guys, so, anyway, this thing, uh, these go for, uh, the prices are kind of everywhere on them. I've seen them anywhere from 800 all the way up to 1500 so uh, I feel like I got a good deal on the trade I didn't have to pay any cash on my end or anything like that and I got a really cool uh, P220 so and I got rid of all of my other polymer frame guns I'm going to steel and aluminum frame guns uh, because the truth is guys polymer just doesn't hold its value you know I really hate to say it but st stuff like this here that my polymer frame guns they just they don't hold value they really don't you know I mean you can sit there and argue with me until you're purple in the face about oh yeah they hold their value <laughs> no they really don't you can go on auction sites and buy these things for like $225 sometimes. Sometimes a little more, sometimes a little less. But I mean, that's a pretty big drop considering you paid, you know, $550, $600 for it. Of course, depending on where you live at, you know, whatever state you live in, it might be higher, it might be lower, whatever. But down here where I live at, you know these things go for like 550 brand new without the TLR one of course but anyway they did they don't hold value long term you know versus this right here it's 1911 right here it oh it's holding its value and going up okay I bought this for five hundred sixty dollars brand new right now these things are going for almost seven hundred dollars so they're going up in value the name is being recognized and they're starting to get really fame and all that stuff because mine has the stainless finish on it everything is done to it you know it's it's right now it's sitting at about a six hundred dollar gun even used so you know and it's continuing to go up all the time uh, this uh, where'd you go this sig right here you know you can bet that back when it first came out it was probably four hundred dollars maybe three hundred and twenty three hundred and now these things are cooking eight hundred to fifteen hundred depending I haven't had this one evaluated but judging off of its condition I would say it's it's probably lurking somewhere around that one thousand dollar range probably I mean I'm, I'm not real educated on these but anyway my FFL had it and uh, he was about to put it up for sale and so I offered him a trade on it and he was like yeah sure you know, whatever just come get it because right now it's kind of the slow season guns really aren't moving for him so anyway get you one last good look there and then we're gonna go ahead and sign out but there she is and the trigger is pretty amazing too I have to say I don't make a habit of dry firing let's just check one more time just to verify okay yes it is a hundred percent empty but you got your trigger back here you know and it you got just a little bit of take up right there as soon as you get to the very back very very easy to pull trigger I mean it might be two and a half pounds it's actually lighter than my 1911 trigger which is a four pound trigger so double action let me see double action is a little more on the heavy side it's a very heavy very heavy trigger double action is very heavy I would say probably 15 I mean it, it's heavier than any double action revolver I've ever shot I'll tell you that way way heavier but uh I might carry this thing sometimes whenever the boss ain't looking 
and I don't have to worry about being micromanaged and stuff like that. So I will, uh, I might carry those sometimes. We'll have to see. But anyway, if that's not a real enough SIG for you, then I guess there is nothing real enough for you. Anyway, guys, that'll be it for now. If y'all have any questions, comments, or concerns, please post those down in the comment section down below. If you want to, be sure to like and subscribe. Y'all have a great day. Take care. Don't do anything I wouldn't do.